So uh, thank you very much to circuit specialists. Uh, I have a bench full of Siglent equipment. Uh, this is a Siglent power supply. I've got a Siglent uh, bench meter here, function generator, and Siglent, Siglent digital oscilloscope. So we're going to show you some of the cool things we can do with some of that uh, some of that Siglent equipment that I got from circuit specialists. Big shout out to uh, Maria Janet for uh, excellent customer service. I'm going to be sticking with you guys. Um, been with you guys for a long time uh, since you were Webtronics, I think, and uh, back in the day when uh, <laughs> I was doing positive photoresist print circuit boards, we now do uh, uh, direct print uh, etch, and this stuff used to come in a green can, green label. Yep. So let me show you some of the things you can do with the uh, with the oscilloscope. Uh, real simple, novel kind of things you can test out with it. Everybody can put waveforms up uh, up on the oscilloscope and draw circles and put interference patterns up. So I'm not going to show you any of that. I'm going to show you something real practical. Well, let's just take a look here. This is a, uh, it's a 100 kilo ohm potentiometer. I have it connected to the power supply and the oscilloscope such that when I turn the uh, potentiometer nice and slow, the oscilloscope goes, I can get the trace tube up and down. And what this is useful for is to see if I've got a noisy pot. Now certainly you can hear that but if you're going to put a potentiometer into some sort of device, move the camera out here, um, it's nice to know if it's, if it's good or bad before you put it in. So that's what a good one looks like. <clears throat> and I'm going to hook up a bad one and show you what that looks like. Uh, and you can see that goes all the way up there. And that's noise right there. Um, that's at the end of the travel, and that, that's horrible. Uh, and that's a bad potentiometer. We're literally going to throw this in the trash when the video is over. And there's some glitching there. At either end of the travel, we have problems, especially on this one here. That's a that's a big one. And I'll just show you if you can see what I'm doing here. You can see it? I'm just moving the, the shaft. And I'm not really spinning it or moving it slow, but at the end of the travel, there you see that crap. And now I got it at the end of the travel, it should be full voltage. Okay, and then uh, let's take a look at this uh, Siglent power supply I've got here. One of the cool things about this power supply is that when you connect it up in uh, constant current mode, what it'll do is it'll ramp up the voltage when you turn the channel on. It'll ramp up the voltage until it achieves the, the set current that you, that you specify. So what that lends itself to actually is testing Zener diodes. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to grab uh, some Zener diodes out of my Zener diode drawer here. Uh, here's my Zener diode drawer. And I'm going to grab some Zener diodes that I don't really know what they are. It's awful hard to read markings on them. I got two of them here. And uh, <clears throat> so what you do is you set up your, your power supply, your signet power supply here. Let's see if I can get that in there for you. that. Alright, so <clears throat> you set your power supply up. So I've got the voltage cranked up as, hard, as high as it'll go at uh, 32 volts on the one channel. Let's see if I can get in there a little bit better. And uh, I've got the, uh, the current set to 20 milliamps. Alright, and I have the channel turned off. So this is another cool thing about this power supply. I'll be honest with you, of the things that I have here, the two things I use the most are the power supply and the bench meter. <laughs> Uh, these things are really indispensable. So anyway, what you do is you take your, your Zener dial, you got to be careful when you do this. Make sure your channel's turned off, and then uh, what we're going to do is we're going to connect the, uh, <clears throat> the positive power supply output to the uh, cathode <laughs> of the Zener diode and the negative power supply output to the anode of the Zener dial. Let's see if I can get the camera to focus on this real quick here for you. If I do this, then you'll be able to see it. Yep, so that's how we hook that up. Then, <clears throat> over on the power supply, all we do is turn the channel on and we watch the voltage go up. And that's 5.2. I'm guessing uh, 5.2 volt, maybe 5.1 volt Zener. Certainly looking like 5.2 right here. And I don't even know what it is. I'm I don't have to know. The meter will tell me. So, <clears throat> we'll turn the channel off. Turn that off before you disconnect the Zener. Let's try one more. 
So this one here will be um, <clears throat> our second Zener test. And with, well, once again, it just it ramps up the voltage until it reaches the 20 milliamps that you have set. And with the Zener, that voltage will be the Zener voltage. So here we go, we've got our, our, our second one set up here. Get the camera to focus on my hand. There we are. <clears throat> okay. And I'm just going to turn the channel on. Watch the voltage climb up there. Oh, looks looks like that's a 12.1 volt zener. I don't have to get the <laughs> the inspection camera out and try to read the, the numbers off the side of the dial. Thank you very much, circuit specialists. Um, really enjoy my equipment. Um, this is this is some really good stuff. They send it fast. Uh, their cu customer service is uh, top notch. And uh, once again, thank you very much, circuit specialists.